Ladies and gentlemen, we've got four pairs, one representing a mall, one representing a brand or an anchor tenant, and we'll invite them on stage right away. Please put your hands together and welcome from the marketing head, DLF Mall of India, Ishita Yashvi. And sales and business development and projects head, Calvin Klein, Vishal Anand. Please welcome our next uh, pair, that's Amit Jingan, manager leasing Gardens Galleria, Galleria and Manoj Jha, marketing head of Hyper City. Amit Jingan, manager leasing of Gardens Galleria and Manoj Jain, marketing head Hyper City. Can we have on stage our third set, Mohamed Ali, Chief Operating Officer, Prestige Malls, and Manohar Chatlani, Chief Executive Officer and Managing Director, Soch. And let's put our hands together for our fourth pair. That's Gaurav Balani, Marketing Head, Infinity Mall, and Sumit Saneja, Head, Business Development, Bestseller. And ladies and gentlemen, if we have, we also have a jury to make things exciting, and uh, we will be judging the best of the best, the first among equals, and that pair will get a trophy presented tonight, okay, at the awards. So let's welcome our jury. He is business head, Aditya Birna Group Textiles. Please welcome Mr. Thomas Varghese. He is the board member, El Catadan Asia. A warm welcome to Biju Korean. Vice President, Head of Marketing at Target, Rakesh Mishra. Okay, and founder, Chief Executive Officer, Meta Capital Advisors, LLP, Mr. Pankaj Jaju. But without much ado, let's meet our first pair. Hi, good evening. Uh, my name is Amit, Amit Shingan. And, uh, you know, I'll basically start with a quick uh, introduction about uh, the project what I represent. Uh, I, I basically represent a company called Entertainment City Limited, who has a 147 acres patch of land uh, in Noida, which is very, very next to Delhi. And uh, I stand here to uh, basically introduce one of my anchor tenants, which is uh, Hyper City. Uh, the guys have occupied about 50,000 square feet on the lower ground floor, and they were the first ones to, to flagship the project, you know, with, with the very, very great beginning. And today, uh, you know, it's been almost an year of uh, yeah. togetherness. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll like to introduce you, uh, you know, what our anchor tenant has been doing uh, over this year. Hi. Good evening, everybody. My name is Manoj Jain. I represent Hypercity India Retail Limited. Uh, we'll just take you through how we've associated with Garden Galleria, uh, a mall which is located in Noida, uh, Uttar Pradesh. So we'll just talk about how we've associated and how we've moved forward and how the synergies have worked with the mall as well as being a tenant. Okay, uh, to just give you, uh, is everybody aware of Hypercity? Just a small intro. We are part of the K. Raheja group, and K. Raheja group has interest into real estate. We're all aware of it. But Shopperstop and Crossword are our sister concerns. Uh, about Hypercity, Hypercity is actually one of the largest. We operate in big box formats. We have around 19 stores across 10 cities in India. Uh, we have around 50,000 products, 5,000 brands, and uh, we cater to a wide uh, audience, right from international gourmet to even uh, you know an Airtel store, shop and shop available to laundry to salons available at our store, and we have around two million customers who actually visit us on a monthly basis. Uh, it's a pan-India exposure which we have uh, now. I'm just taking you through actually what our profile is because it's very important the mall which you are present in actually matches the profile which you have defined as a customer TG. So we have defined our customer as a homemaker, a woman who's 30, 35 years old, who's experience seeker, who's a value uh, seeker, who's cosmopolitan, who's upwardly mobile, who is into the digital age. So it becomes extremely important as I repeat the mall which you are present in caters to that type of uh, audience because then the synergy works. Whatever you do, whatever campaigns you run, the way you run it uh, with your current customers. Uh, these are a few things of the store uh, pictures, which is uh, we are across food, home, and fashion. So this is our store pictures, which is at uh, the Garden Galleria. Uh, this is our fruit and vegetable section. 
uh, we, as, as I said, we cater to everything, right from perishables to fashion to toys uh, to non-food to home to home essentials. So basically everything and we exclusively partners with Wade Road, which is an international uh, gourmet. We run a loyalty program, which is the Discovery uh, Club Card. And to be very honest with you, this uh, Garden Galleria is a place where our loyalty base is the highest. Now, when you look at Noida, each and every sector has a community market. Each and every sector is represented by a mother dairy suffer. But it becomes very, very important for a hypermarket to exist among such competition. So in our case, being present in sector uh, 18 of the uh, st city, which is Noida, which is an extremely competitive sector. And as I said, every sector in Noida has an individual uh, community market. But our loyalty is extremely high in a place like Noida. Actually, if you go to see around 60% of our base is loyalty base. People who come, who travel from across Delhi, which is Mayur Riyar and Maharani Bagh, uh, who, who come to Noida to shop. So it becomes extremely important to drive loyalty. In fact, you know, I'm sorry I'm interrupting, but what he wants to explain here is is also, uh, you know, quite visible from the kind of sales these guys are doing. You know, they started off with about 18 million uh, sale, and on month to month today they have reached to a number which is which is exactly the double of what they started off. So, you know, what he's trying to focus is that you know, uh, Hypercity being a new anchor tenant, hailing from a new property which is which is already a part of GIP, which has been there for a couple of years. You know, uh, it is it is a it is an establishment where you know you not only drive customers to a new property, but you also achieve numbers which are which are productively growing on month-to-month -month basis. Absolutely. Uh, so there are a lot of associations which, as a hypermarket, uh, we need to build and we have done. So there are a lot of uh, RJ activities which actually we've done. There are joint promotions with the mall because the mall conversion becomes extremely important to drive footfalls. So now, like the way summer is coming. So how as a hypermarket as well as a mall we synergize and we bring across that. Uh, budding Chef is something which is extremely important to us and it actually it gives us a platform to uh, customers to come and actually showcase as well as sell their products at the store. So this is something which is very successful. There are obviously a lot of celebrations as per seasonality and regionality is what we do. So Festo as I said, uh, seasonality and regionality. And obviously, there are a lot of coupons uh, systeming which happens at the mall to drive footfalls. I think, I think uh, to sum it up, because you know we are running uh, already, you know, ahead of time. Uh, by by all this, what we want to say is that you know, as as there are other sessions also where people have explained that you know how important it is to interact with your customers and make uh, you know shopping more lively and more interactive. I think you know by by such events, uh, getting the Arjuna with or or bedding chefs. You know, to a property like uh, Hypercity, we have we are trying to focus people who come to shop. They should interact and spend more time there, and and and, and it becomes a different experience altogether. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, right on the buzzer. Please put your hands together for Amit Chengan and Manoj Cha, a partnership in Gardens Galleria and Hypercity. We'd now like to invite our next pair, Mohammad Ali. Chief Operating Officer, Prestige Malls, and Manohar Chatlani, Chief Executive Officer and Managing Director, Soch. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Are we up? Okay, we have only three slides, so I don't have to waste time. Uh, Prestige Group owns the brand forum. I hope most of you know. We have six malls uh, in South India with about three million square feet, thousand plus retailers, and Soch uh, is. Manu Chatlani, and uh, he has two brands, Favorite Shop and Soch. Soch has more than 100 outlets in India with about 350 crores uh, turnover. So I'm here to share an association uh, which is very emotional, so I thank Images for giving us this opportunity. Uh, if people know Forum opened in the year 2004, and I was part of the team who opened that mall and leased that mall, I'd like to share that today, Okay, this is the Forum Mall in Bangalore. We all know its highest trading density. It is one of the most award-winning malls and so on and so forth. But when we were trying to lease this mall in the year 2002, 2003, 2004, the story was very different. Nobody knew what malls. This is one of the first organized retail centers to open in India. Gave birth to several firsts, several brands 
who have gone on to become national brands, including Forum itself. So Soch is one of uh, those brands. Now, what happened was when we were leasing this mall, uh, the Bangalore scenario, as people would know, was divided into these two streets. For ethnic way, it was the commercial street, which still dominates. And for Western way, it was Brigade Road. And that's the end of it. So every time we went to people asking them to come to the mall, which is about 10 kilometers away from the city, the answer was, you guys are making a mistake. This doesn't work. It's not going to happen. Somehow, we put together and we opened the mall in the year 2004. Most of you have been part of that opening. And uh, unfortunately, we couldn't bring any women's ethnic way brand to the mall. So we got the Madura, the Arvind, and we got the sportswears, and so on and so forth. But a women's ethnic way brand was something that we missed out completely. So we opened the mall with whatever we could, and we were running, and the opportunity came where one of the stores was not doing well. So I don't want to name the store. It was on first floor, and uh, the business was about three lakhs per month. So Manu is a family friend of Prestige. The Prestige, uh, the Razak brothers are retailers from Commercial Street. So we had a connect, so we spoke to Manu and said, okay, would you like to do something? He said, I have a brand called Favorite Shop. If you want, I can put it up. But then that's not what we wanted because we wanted a women's ethnic wear brand and we didn't have it. West Side was the only option. So when we approached Manu, we said, this is the store. So Manu bought over that store with the stocks and whatever was left over. So Manu said, let me come up. And in two, three days time, he created a brand called Soch. And how did Soch open? Overnight, we removed that board, we removed the furniture, he didn't change anything. Everything remained the same. He just put one board, black color board called SOCH Soch, and inaugurated the store the next door. What happened? The 3 lakhs turnover became 20 lakhs, about 600% more in the first month. And that was phenomenal. Because what was happening, that Bangalore was already started to become a micro market. The catchment was already evolving, but people didn't knew it. Now, if you see what's happened in Forum, and if you watch, see what happened in Forum Korma, these are the shopping destinations. It doesn't only have stores, it has several malls. So it started off with that, and after about a few months of operation, Manu shut down the store, ripped apart everything, redid the whole store, and called it, of course, it continued with a renovated, new, brand new image with Soch. Then it started doing about 40 lakhs, 50 lakhs from a thousand square feet shop. And then, of course, Soch went on to become a national brand. And then many, many brands uh, along with us, uh, William Penn, I could name one, and then so on, and Kalmane Coffee is one, and then so on and so forth. So many brands we created. The timing was as such. Uh, we had to learn. The brands had to learn. Uh, and everybody learned. And after that, whatever has happened has, is history. So I'll pass on to Manu to give his version of this whole experience. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, when we took this store, we bought a running store, bought the furniture, bought the goods, because we were very keen to get into the Forum Mall, and we didn't want to waste even a single day. Overnight, we emptied the store. It was selling Western ladies' wear, and we put in our ethnic wear. When we took the store, Irfan, uh, one condition Prestige put on us is, please don't call it favorite shop. I do not want a multi-brand outlet. I want brands in my mall. And I think this is the biggest favor he did to us. We called it Soch. We used to make kurtis under the label of uh, Soch. Uh, my wife's name is Shobha Chatlani. Shobha Chatlani became Soch. And uh, Soch was a runaway hit. 2005 was our first store. 2008 was the second. 2009 was our third store. And today we have 87 EBOs and we are in 20 shop and shops. Uh, the brand, uh, I think we owe a lot. We owe a lot to Irfan who had that foresight, that vision, who said, please give it a brand name, don't call it favorite shop. And we are really indebted to him. Uh, we started in, two okay, we started in 2005 uh, off with the 20 lakh turnover. Uh, after running the store for two months, we renovated the entire store and we jumped to 40, 45 lakhs. After a year or two, we took a store across in the same mall. 
just 20 feet across the passage, we took another store where that also was a runaway hit. And uh, we did, we used to do 45 to 50 lakhs in each of the stores. Uh, today, we've combined both the stores. We have a 2,200 square feet store, which uh, in a bad month, we do about a crore, a crore like crore ten. So, Forum is the uh, starting point of Soch, and it's a huge reason for the success. A very t uh, quick two points. We used to ask Manu, what are you doing? Which is so different because I just cannot take two, ten seconds, please. So, what are you doing which is so differently? Manu used to do two things in the year 2005. A, whosoever came and shopped in, because that was an IT belt, a lot of women who are working. So whoever comes and shops in a store and she has some alterations, some changes, that altered material used to reach their office. That was, and second thing is, what Manu also introduced, uh, probably the one of the first in uh, women's wear, was fast fashion. Because his price points were very low, so about five, six washes, and then you can change again. So these two probably were the winning, you know, streaks which really made the brand and made a huge differentiation in the IT corridor. Thank you. I, I think just one more point. We, we have a store in Commercial Street also and I, I, if you can sell ladies wear in Commercial Street where you've got about 85 people selling ladies ethnic wear, you can sell it anywhere. Let's Thank put our hands together you. for Mohammad Ali of uh, Prestige Malls and Manor Chatlani of Soch. Coming up now, we've got Gaurav Balani, marketing head, Infinity Mall, and Sumit Suneja, head business development, best seller. Our next success story. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Sumit Suneja from Bestseller, and I, my co-presenter. I'm Gaurav from Infinity Mall. So seven years of partnership in seven minutes is a little too tight, uh, but we have had an exciting partnership with Infinity Mall. And uh, we'll give you a quick run through of the presentation. Uh, but before that, I would like to share a small incident which happened with us seven years back when we were evaluating uh, Infinity. And uh, somebody uh, told me that, why are you signing up Mallard? You are a South Mumbai, South Delhi brand. And you'll go bust in one year. And uh, this is not the market for you. And uh, the only words that came out were that uh, we'll see. And uh, here we are, ladies and gentlemen, presenting you our success story. Seven years, five stores, two malls with infinity. It has been a really exciting story. And uh, I will start this with uh, uh, Mr. Gotham's favorite quote. Infinity Mall is the home to my top stores in the country. And uh, uh, Infinity Mall has been actually evolved from uh, brick and mortar experience to a second level. Uh, in today's digital world, we uh, one cannot discount the benefits of shopping at a mall. Uh, that is allow a 360 degree experience of the brand product offering, which uh, as a mall we have uh, everything for everyone, which includes fashion to uh, FNB to uh, gaming to cinema. Customize, customize experiences for customers to make an informed purchase decisions. That means uh, we have very, especially at Best Sellers uh, uh, team, let me tell one thing. They are very, uh, the team is very much focused. Uh, the fashion consultants at the store level uh, becomes a best guiders to the best guiders to to the uh, customers and direct them uh, what they wanted and how what they can purchase. It's brand recall by offering an unforgettable shopping experience. Uh, our brand recall is so strong because of our customer base. They uh, we provide incredible experiences to our customers from entry to the exit of the mall. Traditional brick and mortar. Uh, we are combining online and offline together. And very soon, we'll be coming up with our enhanced loyalty program and omni-channel model. It's true. So, uh, Bestseller and Infinity have always worked together to create business strategies which benefit the end consumer in the end. And, uh, I mean, be it in-store, in-mall branding, uh, activities, new, new product launches, new season launches, 
uh, we've always uh, sat down together and you know brainstormed with with the mall team marketing team and how we can better uh, our our endeavor to uh, market the uh, product or the brand to the end consumer um, each time and uh, we've done many activities uh, which are uh, data driven and uh, it's not just a commodity which we are selling at the end of the day we uh, want to ensure that uh, our customers get the right fashion at the right time these are some of the marketing initiatives which we uh, take uh, which we do uh, amongst uh, amongst uh, many others uh, these are in store branding in store marketing uh, in mall uh, drop downs and cluster mannequins and customer experience zones where uh, it's it's uh, i mean a lot of times a lot of brands feel that why do we need in mall marketing we have stores at the prime locations but at the end of the day uh, when the customer walks in to the mall she is spoiled for choices and she doesn't know which store to enter in uh, first and uh, to get that get her wallet share we need to be in her face and yet not be intruding in her privacy so i think uh, these marketing initiatives with in the mall which we take are very very relevant and important for us to uh, grow forward uh, go forward and uh, i think uh, these all these initiatives which we have taken so far with with infinity in sync with infinity the numbers show itself uh, we have three brands in the mall and uh, uh, jj jack and jones occupies 39% and contributes 36% in sales veramoda uh, occupies 45% of the retail space and contributes about 38% only uh, co contributes uh, i mean occupies 17% and um, contributes 26% to the sales this is a growth trend at infinity mall art uh, jack and jones has uh, grown by 43% uh, cagr veramoda has uh, grown by 45% and only has uh, grown by 35% uh, i mean our thoughts on uh, infinity mall uh, it's a very high traffic generating uh, destination very conveniently and well well designed shopping center it has the right mix uh complete family destination i do, i don't think it, it it is missing anything else and uh, uh, above all excellent mall management support team and uh, one thing uh, which i really wanted to quote uh, best sellers has actually uh, like uh, customers rated best sellers brands with infinity mall uh, and they are the one who actually come again and again to explore uh, their product line and uh, give us announcement to the mall as well and second thing is that we as a mall always believe in providing support uh, brand support to the uh, retailers and best sellers <laughs> really want and to comment something i would that. like to comment on the i mean this is for all the mall developers in this room uh, infinity mall is the one mall in the country which gives uh, complete branding solutions to its retailers free of cost in spite of not being on revenue share i and i think that's a lesson to be learned i mean uh, which only completely proves to say with the numbers that uh, if you if you give space to your in in mall stores they will make money ultimately you will make money just two minutes yeah you want to talk about the loyalty program okay so. uh, we always believe in uh, uh, doing something innovative because we believe in providing infinite experiences to our customers so we are very soon uh, combining online and offline together and launching our enhanced loyalty program and a omni channel model which will be which will be benefit beneficial to the mall as well as the retailers and of course the customers will definitely enjoy that thank you thank you very much and let's put our hands together for gaurav balani and uh, sumit suneja representing infinity mall and best seller Good evening, everyone. We are just going to go straight to our story through a short film, which we hope you all enjoy. Vishal. Hi, I'm Pushpa Bekta. 
I head the shopping malls division for DLF. Very proud to share that uh, we gave House of CK a premium position at the location at DLF Mall of India. The store is doing very well. It's got a full range of CK, including its white label, uh, lingerie and CK jeans. All of them are doing really well. Uh, one of the highest PSPDs uh, in the mall is with House of CK and uh, we are happy that, to be associated with the brand. We hope that House of CK is rolled out in many other DLF properties too. Wish them all the best and wish the uh, group all the best. DLF Mall of India um, offers a very unique uh, proposition. It's India's first and only destination mall. Um, its zoning, the brands under its roof, and its power to pull people from far and wide is what clearly sets the mall apart. DLF has a very clear vision towards enhancing customer experience. Our endeavor is always towards enhancing uh, customer experience whenever they walk into any of our properties, which is why marketing plays a very critical and important role in our business. Um, before we plan our marketing calendars, there's a huge amount of planning and analysis that goes behind it. While we have to be extremely nimble-footed um, because the nature of the business is such, um, every time we plan something, it has to be something relevant, uh, which adds value uh, in a customer's life. There's also um, a very strong uh, focus towards customer research. Uh, we continuously want to know who our customer is, what are they wanting in the mall, what are they not liking in the mall. So that is something uh, we really focus on and that becomes the base of all our planning uh, in DLF Mall of India. One of the most critical parts of our planning is to plan in line with our tenants. Um, our planning is useless until and unless we align with what their objectives and their business goals are. What are they expecting from the LF Mall of India? What do they expect to see? What will make their sales better? And that's where uh, not only marketing but even the operations team works very closely with each brand to ensure the right TG is walking into the mall and higher conversions are taking place. That becomes a hugely critical um, role in our daily lives. A very interesting example would be DLF Mall of India's first Christmas um, wherein we not only planned the first mall musical that happened in the country but we also planned a flat 50 weekend um, but what's interesting is that we didn't really plan it during the end of season sale time we planned it uh, during Christmas Eve and the Christmas weekend which became a huge draw for customers um, customers are very happy, excited, kids were loving it, families were loving it and not only that it gave real high sales to all our brands so that is an interesting example to see how we really work alongside our brands and see how we can make things more and more relevant and more and more ROI driven and more and more interesting. Calvin Klein uh, main label store is our first uh, concept in the country 
and this is the only store which we have introduced at Mall of India in the entire country. Mall of India has been very very instrumental in driving the footfall, uh, catering to the target consumer what Calvin Klein looks for and it has benefited us in a very very aggressive way in the way the last one year has been done for us. Mall of India has been very very instrumental in driving their strategy of molly days and flat days which gives a very international look and feel to the mall. Also the target consumer what they have, it is very similar to the brand like Calvin Klein, that's the reason our retention of a Calvin Klein uh, premium consumer has been very very high and very aggressive. In last 10 months uh, we've been uh, hitting an SSPD of over 140 rupees which is exceptionally high at the size of the store we are at and multiple times we've been number one in the last one year across country. It's overwhelming to see when uh, brands break uh, records um, and um, it's absolutely a heartening feeling to see CK breaking many many records with DLF Mall of India and uh, we're just in a happy space right now. So thank you everyone. Uh, we'll take you back into the journey that this uh, what we have done is we have done a sales of 7.5 crores in 10 months, which is 300 days approximately. <clears throat> and uh, to take you through the journey in a very short span of time, that India was the first country to propose to CKI, CK International, uh, a concept which everything will be put together under one roof, and they agreed. And this was one of the first stores uh, open in the world. And uh, post that, uh, when we had to launch CK Main Label, then we uh, test marketed with our Infinity Mall in Mumbai. And that's how we are in that. So what, what uh, three, four things it has done to us is that it has given buyers to buy us in more occasions. So there are multi, uh, many more occasions like at leisure, when they're going to gym, when they're doing different, uh, they're going for parties. So we have formals, we have uh, dress shirts. So, I mean, we are able to create uh, or, or get more wardrobe share of the consumer. It is also helping us in what we were discussing in the last session, that uh, why it is important to get more productive space in market. Now we are able to acquire bigger space in all the top malls, and uh, we are able to deliver uh, as per the requirement. And uh, uh, if you see going forward, uh, we feel that uh, this will help us in gaining more and more market share uh, in the BTL space and uh, take us towards the uh, next level of in terms of turnover. And uh, in terms of uh, acceptability, uh, we are seeing that consumer who were not coming to CK to buy jeans are coming to us and buying. So now over to Ishita. Sorry for the little uh, glitch. Just to quickly recap Parag's um, interview here in the film, he was basically mentioning that um, the House of CK was a first of its kind store which opened at DLF Mall of India and they'd like to take it forward across the country. Seeing the success that it saw in DLF Mall of India, I think that was the crux of his interview. Um, other than that, I'd just like to say that this is one of the success stories wherein we work closely with the brands to create uh, better sales, uh, give them the TG that they need and uh, we just hope to create uh, many many more success stories with all our brands thank you let's put a hands together for Ishita Yashwi and Vishal Anand representing DLF Mall of India and Calvin Klein ladies and gentlemen well we leave uh, their fate in the hands of our jury uh, could we put a, uh, have a round of applause for every one of them they are all success stories. They are all winners. Of course, our jury will select the first among equals. Thank you very much to the four of you, four pairs kindly to step down. We will continue with the panel discussion based on your stories. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got a panel discussion with a galaxy of luminaries who are going to come up on stage and we'll take it forward from where our stories left off. Please put your hands together for our panelists. He is sent ahead, Great India Place. Please put your hands together for Mahim Singh. Sent ahead, the Great India Place, Mr. Mahim Singh. Please welcome Executive Director, Pacific Group, Abhishek Bansal. A warm welcome to the bus uh, to Director of Business Development, Raymond Sanjeev Rao.
Let's hear it for business head EBO and e-commerce, mass brands Amante, Pallav Atreja. He is head of retail at Kazo. A warm welcome to Taranpreet Singh. And ladies and gentlemen, moderating the session, we've got two power packed moderators. Please put your hands together and welcome Mr. Pankaj Ranjan, Managing Director, Retail Services, JLL India. And joining him, the founder, Trust for Retailers and Retail Associates of India, Mr. P.S. Nagesh. Hi, Over thank you, you very much. I think the first thing we need to do here in the hall is that we give seven minutes as per the buzzer for people to clap. I mean, there's so much of work happening and nobody was clapping. Everybody seems to be sleeping. And, and Amita, from next time onwards, instead of having these fruits all around, I think you need to have some coffee tea, especially after that biryani lunch that you serve. Yeah? What happens to this side of, uh, this is for the anchor? The third is building the balance, so I can be a South Indian next to the third. Yeah. But welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I think this whole uh, discussion about mall and retailer working together is a very, very old uh, story that I remember a long, long time back. And uh, <coughs> uh, somewhere 1998, when uh, I was involved with the Ansel Plaza setting up the first shopper stop, I mean, that was one of the difficult choices you had. And it was like this only. I mean, those of you who know Ansel Plaza, you know, it was a round uh, mall. And we had a store which was on one side. It was like a bean and it was a store on one side. And from then on till almost about three years back, you only heard about the, uh, the mall owners or the mall management or the malls and the retailers fighting with each other only on rentals. But I think the life has changed. One thing good that the e-commerce guys have done together is instead of the mall management and the retailers sitting across the table, I think they have moved both of them to sit together. So you actually work for the consumers rather than work uh, against each other and uh, help make money. So where are you, Pankaj? Why don't you share some of your thoughts and then we pick on with the panelists on the whole thing about mall and retailers working together for the consumer. So first, let me add to it, uh, the fight actually between the mall owner and was on the rental plus cam, where the cam used to be higher than the rental also. So the fight, uh, it was literally every panel discussion which I attended on uh, images and I remember, sir, when you were posting a lot of these, uh, the fact was this, the debate was always about that. Uh, I think as an industry, we definitely have matured. Uh, we've definitely gone up and we're talking about partnerships. And it's great to see particularly all these partnerships uh, which engages wherein brands like Soch get created out of these partnerships. Uh, and it's a big salute to brands like that. Uh, brands like House of CK which international brands come up and actually say that we're going to do something different from Indi for India. You know, it's really great to go and see those, some of those stories uh, actually where it's getting created for India. Uh, I think also, sir, what we should be doing is uh, before we do... Uh, I'm sure there are a lot of brand wallas and mall wallas here in the audience as well. And I'm sure they have some great stories to share also. Why don't you check up first of all how many mall people are here? Yeah. yeah. How many people, people are operating from malls? malls? Raise your hands. But they're still in the minority. Yeah. Operating brands. Well, what about retailers? Well, the retailers are not there, so <laughs> it's, it's wonderful. Yeah, anybody wants to share a story which is much which more? We can't give you seven minutes. We can give you only one minute to share a story of a mall and a retailer doing a fantastic job serving the customer. Or you're, you know, say that something which they exceptionally did for you, you, you or a mall where a brand did something exceptional or different for you or somebody. Or if you don't come up, then we'll probably start calling names now. Oh. So there are no exceptional stories, only seven or, or four or five of them which we chose. I think, I think Abhishek has a story to say. Yeah, Abhishek. Yeah. yeah. Hi. Um, so first thing first, I love the way real estate developers get bashed in this forum. Uh, so uh, it's, it's always great to uh, find out that people are actually talking about you. So that feels great. Um, the second thing on, on Pankaj and uh, Nagesh sir's point. Uh, so we recently opened a decathlon store in Amol. Uh, this was, uh, the area was next to the hypermarket, didn't have clear access from the atrium. So we created a um, thousand square feet glass box, which is totally built of glass, the roof is glass and everything. And we put in two set of escalators from right next to the 
entrance on the ground floor. So when I explain this, it doesn't sound too, uh, uh, too fantastic, but uh, I, I hope I can share pictures later on. But we created a separate entrance to the lower ground floor from the ground floor, fit in two set of escalators um, to take people into the store directly. And uh, it's just been about a couple of uh, months that they've opened and they're already doing fantastic numbers. We couldn't have imagined a store at that location otherwise if it was not for that entrance. And I, I want to congratulate Decathlon also, you know, to be able to work with us and believe that that entrance will work, a separate entrance into the lower ground floor. And that worked very well for us. How much, what was the role of Decathlon in terms of suggesting you the plan? What, did they come and say, hey, this well, is the uh, space, I'll since, pick it up? Since it's a French brand, they showed me the 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 lure, the one, the, the the lure, lure yeah. yeah, and and uh, I was like, okay, you want to build this, and uh, so first I couldn't believe it, but then when now when I look at it, I wouldn't say it's the same thing, but it's pretty much there. But are they paying the same rent that the, you pay in Lure in Paris? <laughs> I wish. Oh, come on, this <laughs> well, is not fair. <laughs> well. I mean, if you suggest something <laughs> like that, you have to get rent like that, no? <laughs> Yeah, anybody else has anybody else from a retailer's point of view? Amante, you have some. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll share a very small, uh, you know, recent experience that we had with uh, one of our stores that we opened at Ilante Mall, Chandigarh. So this so far has been the biggest mall, biggest store that we have opened. It's 1,600 square feet carpet. Uh, the super area comes out to be around 2,600. So the first reaction we got from everyone is, you know, what's I, have you gone crazy? 2,600 square feet uh, lingerie store, that too in uh, Chandigarh. Uh, but then, you know, it was kind of a bold decision from our end, as well as uh, from the mall who supported us in uh, reaching out to the right customers, market the store really well uh, when we took off. So this was recently in Feb, and we had a very good uh, marketing event spread over three days. We invited a celebrity for the launch. We collaborated with the mall to uh, reach out to the right audience in uh, not only in the city but in the surrounding areas. Uh, so there were a lot of collaborative efforts which were put down by the brand as well as the mall. The support we got from the mall was uh, really, uh, you know, good. So that's that's a story that has taken, uh, you know, given us the confidence that this kind and this kind of format, this kind of size, or this kind of category also has a market in tier two, tier three, uh, smaller towns where, uh, you know, there, there's a lot of money, there's a lot of uh, buyers out there, but they do not have access to these uh, experience zones. Yeah, but Sanjeev, if you or anybody has a experience to share where the mall operator or the mall management and the retailer work together and create something unique, which is absolutely disrupting, which made a big difference to the business and to the customers. Yes, so <clears throat> there's one thing which comes to my mind, sir. Uh, you know, we've been having this uh, discussion for quite for some time. Uh, I mean, uh, I think this was somewhere last year that we must uh, celebrate the regional festivals uh, uh, in malls. Now, if you go to the larger malls, you'll find that, uh, you know, obviously that the regional festivals are definitely celebrated in those malls. But we as Raymond, we decided that, uh, you know, whether it is Onam or whether it is uh, Durga Puja in Kolkata or whether it is even an event. Uh, so this event is actually called, um, uh, uh, I don't know how many Bengalis are here, but you will understand it's called Bhai Pota which is uh, basically where you, uh, uh, where the sisters actually, uh, uh, you know, celebrate their brothers. They pamper the brothers. They pamper the brothers. So what we do, we pick up such events, we go to the mall and we say, look, we need, we need space. And uh, we do up the whole place. We really create an aura around that whole festival, come up with advertisements, put up hoardings, uh, and do a big event in the mall. So this has been an extremely successful collaboration that we have. We are now running across uh, uh, different regions. I mean, in Cochin, we did Onam, which was a runaway success. Not only for the mall, we brought in humongous amount of footfall into the mall by doing events, getting uh, celebrities to come and endorse. Uh, and, and same thing goes for the other regional festivals. So a very high degree of collaboration is required by the malls. and. Uh, 
one thing what I have realized is in the last couple of years, uh, mall developers have also realized the fact that until and unless the retailers are not successful and you're not able to do what you what you're meant to do, uh, it doesn't make any sense for the malls also. So they've started collaborating. And uh, these collaborations are highly successful for us. In fact, a couple of those presentations, I think, I think we must have run through you also. <laughs> Pankaj, I have a, a question which is coming up. You know, the mall developers have become very sensitive towards the brands and retailers to make them successful. Are there any uh, examples of a brand who went back and said, I think it is important for the malls also to be successful. Till yesterday we were paying you 7%. We have decided from 1st of April we are going to pay you 9%. Abhishek, come on, now you need to actually come out Sir, and tell us share. about such examples, come on. Sir, I'll just share something on the lighter note. Uh, I've been into malls since 2003 and since you mentioned about Ansels, so I started with Ansels, went through DLF, then uh, Elante and now with the, uh, the Great India Place Mall. So we were just discussing, I was seeing these presentations and I was just thinking that we have evolved, we have evolved, the malls have evolved, the retailers have evolved on many fronts, be it technology, be it uh, know-how, be it everything. But one thing where we have really evolved is the relationship between a retailer and the mall management. I remember it was about, uh, say about 10 years back, when uh, a retailer used to come us asking for the uh, footfall figures. So my marketing guy used to come and ask me, Sir, konse wala dun? We used to have two figures, one was the actual figure and one was the escalated figures. So that was 15% escalated, 20% escalated, whatever. And the same was with the retailers. When we used to go to them and ask them for their sales, that, uh, so you, they used to decrease it by 15-20% and give it to us. So that uh, confidence was missing. That confidence, uh, that uh, thing was missing, which has now really evolved. Now, now, now we are sitting with the retailers, the mall management is sitting with them. Uh, the retailers comes to us, we go to them whenever we uh, find uh, that the footfalls are not uh, doing well and how can we do it and that is where the good malls are really picking up. That's how the good malls are really picking up now. So that confidence level has started building up. So I, I'll second that and uh, though there are a lot of examples that I can share, but a couple of them that I can instantly recall is one with Pacific Mall, wherein they've created this event called Women's Wednesday. And it's a hugely successful event. They, you know, uh, it's, they collaborated with all the brands and they said that, you know, on this day, you have to give something special to the ladies coming into the mall. And it just does not have to be discounts. It can be beyond discounts. And all of us were very happy to hear this, that, you know, mall saying that beyond discounts, you can do stuff. So we decided to put in a stylist in the store on every Wednesday and I think that is one thing that has really worked for us. The Wednesday numbers are very different from what it used to be. Similarly in Phoenix malls, you know, especially in Kurla, what we've seen, they do this annual event wherein they invite the brands to come up and do their fashion show. And they, they provide the facilities, they provide the infrastructure, they provide you the models. You just have to, you know, give your garments and stuff like that. So there are a lot of examples like that. But uh, I, I would say uh, we, we need to see more of them and we need to see more of more malls, you know, coming up like that. So I, to answer your question, I want to add to uh, what uh, Mahim and uh, Karan Preet are saying. Today, I think it's not about earning uh, because a lot of the earlier the point was always about in saying, can I earn more? Who earns, can I get, a, can I get from a retailer? Can I extract more from a mall developer? I think it's also today the competition for the mall and even for the retailer is very different and he doesn't know where this competition will suddenly come up. This could be an e-commerce story which happened. Today for the retailer, majority of the mall, 60% still happens to be fashion and fashion related. Today the ground floor space was always reserved for those guys. Today, and if you look at it internationally also, a lot of the malls, your competition with the fashion retailer, it's the F&B guy. It's that food and beverage who's taking away the space from the fashion stores today. So the competition is continuously changing and actually it's putting a lot of mind share of the retailers and saying how do I continue to be actually relevant for both in the marketplace as well as in the marketplace in terms of the sub-market also when I'm existing in a mall today. Because the customer who's coming in is going to spend X amount of money or X amount of time 
is he going to go straight for the food and beverage go watch the movie and come back and will not shop in my mall or in my store as well so i think the competition is changing and is forcing the mall owner and the retailer to work collectively to see be relevant in that sub market as well and secondly uh, you know our government's also very good uh, so there is demonetization and suddenly this 500 meter thing as well so there's something constantly keeping us on our toes as a business also uh, which keeps us keep working and partnering today and i can see it i can tell you with this 500 meter ruling which has come up uh, of uh, this thing you see the proactiveness of the mall owner and the retailer which is the fnb retailer who are getting affected working obviously the objective is obviously get it solved but they're working very very closely and they're actually have i've seen whatsapp group of retailers and developers they all in one platform particularly facilitated by associations like national Res restaurants association of india and the others but they're all working to objective and saying because it is a matter of survival it is a matter of growth and it is a matter of about the fact of the matter is it's a business interest which is aligned also but it's also about a matter of survival today so i think the story has really changed today and the landscape is much more conducive also i i just had a thought since everybody is here yeah i'm going to come to you i was about to come to let me come to this table only i was just wondering things like this if a lokan wala street can work together if a south extension can work together why is it that the garden galleria and the great india place and the dlf don't combine together and say let's get the whole crowd into this three place between the three of them if they 10 million square feet they 20 million square feet mall if these two gentlemen can sit together on the same table the infinity and the in orbit the two eyes Okay, then what stops them actually building a destination which is the Malad uh, Road? Can I can I have a mic? Yeah, I think I think we should give him a mic there, you know, because there's a new collaborative model that can come in. And just imagine, you know, the Calvin Kai and I have said, "Hey, come, let's do one J Great India Place." Send. Okay, this came. Let's go here. Send. You know, just imagine collaborative model. You don't require three BD guys. You require one cost cutting. I mean, this is amazing. I mean, just just imagine what can happen. Can you get a mic here, please? Yeah. Then it becomes a Noida versus Gurgaon story. Huh? I am okay with it. No, no, but he is not okay because he says, "What will JLL do then?" No, sorry, I didn't mean that. I, next, next, I'm going to come to the DLF and the Garden Gate area. You want to say first? You say first. After then, both of you. I think if uh, if Infinity and In Orbit was close enough to do some joint infrastructure development, we would have happily done. the distance between the two malls is 500 meters only uh, i doubt sir is is 1 km 800 meters if we build something jointly it will be more than the cost of each property <laughs> itself but no. you will be surprised both of us meet at least once in a two months time and it has nothing to do with retailers we discuss we share data i exactly know which retailer in his mall is doing how and what are the challenges he is facing how's the categories in his malls are growing what i am doing in my mall is com completely aware of and we understand from each other how our mar micro market is growing and how we can make it better but do you imagine a situation where together where together yeah, you so can get i, I can i can call obroy also because we know about them as no, well no obroy is 2. <laughs> point, obroy is 2.2 km so this is 1.8 km it's yeah. not far <laughs> no i'm 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 serious about it i'm serious about it if can can Two, three malls together create a destination because all of us are suffering from footfalls. I mean, today look at what has happened to T Nagar. I mean, T Nagar is probably the highest footfall street in this country. I think uh, what you're saying, sir, is more relevant. Where, uh, if you see Delhi, where district center is been governed by Delhi government, and they created properties defined by lines. There are three malls sitting next to each other, and uh, they have same facade decided by the government of Delhi. you from the facade you cannot make out which mall you are looking at so if you have developments no, is, no, no, I, uh, he is in a different mode today huh. uh, <laughs> so if if you have malls which is so close by the only other example i can see in country is where you have vr mall and phoenix in bangalore sitting next to each other i think there are opportunities uh, to do together to come out as one destination and a lot of uh, exchange of information can happen when you are sitting one and a half kilometer away in a dense population like bombay which i think uh, we we in the 3 kilometer radius talking about a million people staying which is bigger than some of the smaller towns i think it's big difficult for us to work together but at times it takes me 18 minute drive from my mall to reach his mall well i just want to leave the thought are there collaborative opportunities which are which are coming across yes, yes can i say i think the biggest collaborative opportunity is to create a shopping festival rather than waiting and saying each mall will collaborate with others i think together as an industry we meet every 
every year we meet twice we can't even agree on a shopping festival date look at what dubai has done for themselves they're creating opportunity for people to come and shop uh, look at what online guys have done they've ensured that they all go on sale together they are able to divert traffic uh, obviously they're burning some money also but i think together we are all burning money if we collaboratively all of them advertise and they only advertise when they have to advertise for a flat 50 on, on the entire mall rather if we all advertise put in the money together and i'm sure the brands will also be happy to collaborate why not create three or four days of shopping festival where the entire people want to come in uh, we all participate in all this in online we can do it offline also so i think the collaborativeness has to come from a uh, maybe Amitabh should lead it. I have been telling him for some time, but uh, he's the only one who is able to get us all together. So hopefully he'll be able to find this solution also. Uh, secondly, I want to share one more thing you had asked initially. I'm all going out of the way to do something. We do this Super Saturday, which is a big property which we started at Linking Road. Uh, we were struggling to do, find a mall where we could do it. And I think DLF Saket came back with that big uh, answer to us and they, they went uh, out of the way to support us. They opened the mall at two in the night for us to set it up and st customers start at six in the morning, the store runs till 12 in the midnight and then we shut it and they don't charge us a penny for it uh, but they create this and they also ensure the FNB is open, they also ensure a lot of other brands open along and I think together we've been able to create a festival and I think there's so many collaborative opportunities we can all do together but I think we don't come together enough. Anybody wants to talk like a customer here and say what would they expect I from the brands I, or the mall owners. You, you asked a question, can I just answer that? You I have to take the mic away, huh? this is becoming a <laughs> monopolistic <laughs> table. Yeah? Uh, you asked the question that has retailer gone back and given mall more money if they were doing good? Uh, I think it's important for me to share this. At Inorbit Lifestyle, which was signed in 2003 and a very old deal, it did not have revenue share into it at the original uh, tenure that we signed with them. And the CAM at that time was very, very low. And we, being a real estate developer at that time, thought the office cams and retail cams might be similar. And it was the cam figure itself was very low. So five years in uh, business, when we requested the cams have gone up, and how, what can you? They increased the cam. Uh, they proactively said, we understand. You need to maintain the property. And it's good for us to have property being maintained well. They increased the cam. And when they grew further, we requested if we can relook at commercials. And they said, we can't increase the MG, but we will give you a revenue share. And we added revenue share into the transaction. Uh, that was eighth year of, of their uh, relationship with us. So we have retailers who have come back and supported in a manner saying, I am doing better than what I expected. And I pay you uh, more than what I was paying. Wonderful, wonderful. So coming you back to the, the same, uh, same question about collaboration between the malls. Now, collaboration between the malls is possible if the target segment, if the target audience which they are looking at is the same. But when the mall's target segment differs, like uh, if we speak about, say, Mall of India or uh, TGIP, the Great India Place Mall, or Gardens Galeria, now the target segment is a bit different. What we are, we, uh, it can be a masses mall, it can be a classes mall, it can be, it has to, it has to be identified. Now it can be a neighborhood mall. So. Depending upon that, the marketing activities, the spend on the mall differs. So coming together is a bit of an issue where the target segment is different. But yes, when, where the target segment is same, it, it, it is a possibility. I think I'll tell you the answer for it. So uh, if you're talking about two large mall owners coming together, which is still at least two parties. Uh, in, I presume a lot of no people would be familiar with Delhi. You know, CP, Connaught Place, which is a high street, has got multiple landlords, organizes a CP shopping festival. And who does it? It's somebody who's got an interest to it, but actually puts it together is actually one of the credit card companies, who's American Express or Citibank, who actually go to each of these retailers or shop owners. A lot of it is brands, but a lot of them are actually mom and pop retail uh, shop owners who've been sitting there for 1940s and 1950s, and actually come and do a shopping festival, and they want to take the malls, compete with them. Probably what it needs, Nagesh sir, is really somebody who can actually get both the factions to think alike. But the openness of the mind of the people has to be there, that they are open to it. There could be a facilitation, could be images, could be X, Y, and Z. But somebody who has to have to have open to the idea of doing it. So if a high street like Connaught Place with old landlords can do it, I don't see any reason two malls can't do it. Well, I don't know what's going to happen to the mall and the retailer's collaboration as e-commerce becomes stronger. I mean, I did hear the infinity is going online and you have a 360-degree program for e-commerce. So is there, a, is there a possibility that 
with the e-commerce onslaught, the brick and mortar, and, and the retailers will get together and, and create something very, very different. Is there somebody who has some thoughts on this? Because this could be some idea generation. No, not this table. Yeah. There's too much, of, too much of attention on this table. Probably we'll get some light this side of the table. Yeah. On this side, any this ideas? Side. Or, or even, even from the panelists. Yeah, even have, from, yeah. Or even as a customer, you know, from that perspective. I think we should give back. Yeah. Well, not on uh, particularly the particularly the e-commerce bit, but uh, the I, I can only say how the thought process of the developers have changed since we were talking about developers earlier. So the first question everyone asked when one was leasing the shop was rent kitna doge. Now that has become the second question. The first question is what is the sale that one would do, and how we can grow that sale if that sale is happening. So we are continuously interacting with the retailers to kind of figure out how that sale is going to improve. Now, will that be through a shopping festival or within the center, or can that be with shopping festivals with multiple centers coming together? That needs to be figured out. But within the center shopping festivals we've been doing, and as you rightly said, it is now time that we we showcase something like a city shopping festival rather than just one shopping center festival. And that is when, and especially in a city like Delhi or I operate a center in Dehradun, which are, which are more touristy destinations and a lot of people from other smaller cities come to Delhi or a lot of people travel to Dehradun as tourists and can, you know, uh, you know j jack up the... Or maybe, maybe the sequence of question will change and say, how can we serve the customers better? And therefore, how much will we sell and therefore, what revenue or rental will get? Well, of course, the, the whole point of how would you increase sales is obviously the way you serve your customer and what you offer as a product. Anybody wants to add up? Here's Thomas. Thomas, what has been your experience of dealing with malls and how do you think malls and retail? Now that you are out of it, you can say whatever you want. <laughs> yeah, because absolutely you are pardoned. Well, uh, Nagesh, I think, like you said, I can speak as a retired practitioner in this industry. Um, I think we've been talking about collaboration between mall owners and retailers for a long, long time. I think you and I have also got involved in some of those discussions. Uh, somebody said images should facilitate it. We had CII trying to facilitate it and we've done a number of such iterations in the past. Uh, the real message for, and we're talking about brick and mortar retailers, is what is it that you can do to improve the consumer shopping experience? And if the retailer is not a standalone retailer and he's in a mall, I think the, it really begets the question that they both have to jointly try to improve the consumer shopping experience and do everything that it takes to increase the revenue from the mall. Uh, we've also seen the phases of retail, uh, at least I'm sure both of us have, where from a fixed guarantee minimum rent, uh, one has slowly but progressively moved more and more into a revenue share. And of course, with some mall owners where it's very difficult to cut the ice, you do some minimum, minimum guarantee plus some revenue share. But at the end of the day, I think a lot of people talked about it and of course we will probably, if we get a chance and if my colleagues on the jury get a chance to talk today about the contest that took place, I think very important to understand, uh, some people alluded to it, that the mall has a certain target audience, the store has the same target audience, so there's complete alignment as far as the consumer is concerned. And there should be alignment in the way one wants to sort of meet that consumer shopping experience of that target customer. So that is one point. The second point is that you've got to make it easier for consumers to come into the store at any point in time. Somebody talked about even the problem of going from one mall to the other. And let's talk about Malad. Again, something very close to your heart. I think the other day I was trying to go from one mall to the other and it actually took half an hour, not even no, so 18 minutes it no, took so half an hour. No, so you go from one mall to another, on the way you shop online. 
Uh, well, yeah, that's you right. You can still say, I've been shopping that's for the right. last 45 minutes. But I think the suggestion that was given that, you know, rather than having individual brands go up on sale, and I'm not talking of EOSS because now EOSS is more or less sort of aligned to same time. And some people try to be smart and do it earlier, but everyone else follows, you know. So I'm talking about exactly like people talked about the Dubai uh, shopping festival or the Singapore shopping festival, which of course doesn't really attract too many footfalls now. But uh, Malaysia and Dubai still are very hot destinations for these shopping festivals. And I think, I don't think it's a difficult thing to do because it helps everyone. And right. now after seeing the Flipkart three-day sale and Amazon three-day sale, people can understand that if they do not do this, the online retailers will vacuum all the money out of the market. So, so I think there is an opportunity for Amitabh wherever he is to create something new. This, well, I, met, I met a brand owner here who, a, who runs an Indian brand and she asked me this question, this, what is this trend that is emerging in the whole brick and mortar where international brands get ground floor and Indian brands get first floor or international brands get only revenue share and Indian brands get minimum guarantee plus revenue share. So I don't know what, what, is, what is the whole ethos that is getting developed and why she asked uh, this question to me. Uh, the whole ethos is, is it customer-led brand being slotted in the malls or is it origin-led brand being slotted in the malls? And Pankaj, maybe this is your area. You must be instrumental in doing all this. Yeah. <coughs> so you can blame me for it. Uh -huh. It's a mix like that. Yeah. So. so, yeah, we actually, when we make these reports, um, that's, uh, I think it's true in some cases, uh, but I can tell you that it does happen when something new comes up or a big international name comes up. Uh, and it's not only about retail in space in a mall. It's, I think, even the consumer sentiment as well when you see an international big brand because uh, one, media exposure for all of us uh, is very high. People are traveling abroad. People know what's the biggest, hottest brands that side. We've seen there enough cases, I don't want to name the brands, that they've got prime real estate spaces, but that doesn't last long. And there's been really a couple of these big brands which have emperored in the last two or three years, really burned their fingers and the mall developers have burned their fingers as well. I think that's been a learning. It's like a continuous journey. Uh, that's been the learning which we've seen that when international brands came in, they got favorable terms. Because probably everybody thought that India will straight away graduate uh, from moving from unorganized retail sector to big international brands because they're a big name. But we've realized very, very carefully, and I think the people who have realized it now know that the fact that there has to be a blend. In fact, to point out to you, the biggest selling category today in fashion and the fastest growing is Indian ethnic wear. And I can give you examples for it. Wobbers Pinkus goes and invests in an Indian brand called Biba. General Atlantic goes and invests in a brand called And Global Desi. Then TA Partners goes and invests in a brand called W. And it's not small money. These are about 300 to 500 crore rupees which have got invested in each of these brands. And I, we, we speak to a lot of these private equity guys uh, and the partners, the senior most partners are actually driving a lot of the business plan with the promoters and the BD teams and the others. So there is, and these brands are mostly located on the second floor of the mall. So the action space has shifted. So the international brands are having more of a challenge in this country today than Indian brands are. So they may still get preferential terms, but the marketplace evens out everybody. It's the customer who eventually decides where he wants to go. And he will move. And I can tell you international brands, there have been malls where an international brand wanted a space at their own terms. The mall which was successful said, sorry, you come, I will not do a disfavor to other occupants. But it's about somebody standing up from the industry and saying, I will not do this. It will be equally favorable to everybody. Yes, there could be some preferred because obviously there's something which they bring to the table. But I think that's changing now and the marketplace is actually being the best even, uh, you know, makes you the best even ground for everybody to trade. I, I just have a question for all the mall owners, including Abhishek, if and all of you here. Uh, India has a startup India, the digital India. Is there something called a startup mall, mall space? I mean, can malls create, let's say, a 5% of their space or 10% of the space, not necessarily on a long lease, but give it to the smaller entrepreneurs who actually are uh, startup entrepreneurs and who can actually go and get it. I mean, don't forget, Biba and 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 W got spaces well, much, much. I know this table, he's got <laughs> something which he does for the women entrepreneurs. Yeah, you should give the mic there. That's a very interesting 
interesting thing that Inorbit is doing, and I'm sure that can actually encourage a lot of other mall owners to actually do that. So thank Maybe you for bringing the mic back on this table. I believe that truly the action is here. Uh, we started uh, an initiative for women entrepreneurs, uh, and uh, this year we are running it for the third time. So first year we ran it in Bombay, uh, both the malls, and we got 700 applications from women to say, I have a business idea and I want to do retail. And we chose six, uh, three for each mall, and we gave them free space for nine months as a kiosk, because these are small retailers, they couldn't set up a shop of their own. And one of the retailer in the first season that we selected came back to us at the end of the free period and said, I want to now take this space permanently uh, and I will pay rental for that. So we nurtured an artist. She created a uh, wall space, which was a library, an uh, art library, and she generated business out of that. She came back to us. She paid us money to continue being in that space. In the second season, when we rolled out this initiative across India, all five malls, we got 1,700 applications, and we chose again three in each mall and gave free spaces uh, on, uh, for nine months again. And this time in Bangalore, a restaurant which took uh, space from us in food court as a kiosk has actually requested us to move into a complete restaurant. So they went ahead and uh, renovated a 1,200 feet restaurant, and they have just started operations. So we are picking these initiatives at a very small scale that people are working from their homes or uh, and we are nurturing them, and two of them, I can proudly say, has taken permanent spaces from us in our malls. And we hope, uh, we have this year got in Central Bank, who has promised uh, the softest loan terms that the bank is running to offer to these entrepreneurs. We got uh, an office uh, co-working spaces coming and giving them 30% discount if these uh, women want to use their office space conference rooms. We have Train, which has come up and saying we will provide training. So this is becoming bigger and bigger, and we hope one day, sitting here, standing here, we can say one of those retailers came out of these initiatives. Wonderful. <clears throat> Anybody else from the Sir, I would like to add one thing here. So, uh, and this is not now, this is about 14 years ago, and when I was doing my first mall, the mall was 5 lakh square feet. So somebody asked me a question, do you even know that there are, five lakh, there are tenants who can fill up a 5 lakh square feet shopping center? And then I realized there weren't. 15 years ago, there weren't. So, and that's when I kind of figured out where do the local people go and shop. And they, go, they went to markets like Lajpat Nagar and Kanaut Place. And then I went to Lajpat Nagar, tried to find out which are the brands which are doing well and which and the people come to. From there, we handpicked brands, convinced them to open shops in our mall. And that's so, it was more like a startup even then. The startup word was coined now, but it was more like a mom and shop being converted into an organized retail. You could call that a startup then, but it worked very well even at that point in time. Yeah, in fact, to support the whole digital media, can we, can we imagine a situation where instead of a foot court on the foot court, every table has, a, has a high speed data happening and, and actually an e commerce online happening? And you say that any shopping that happens from that table, you get a commission Sir, out I of I can tell you that the e-commerce uh, business has been the best thing for shopping centers. There couldn't have been anything better. Explain. See, the amount of money these e-commerce guys have burnt telling people shop for brands, shop for quality products. Shopping center owners <coughs> could never do that on pan-India basis. Now the consumer wants to buy quality products, branded products. If not online, they would go offline and buy it. So I think the whatever market has been cut in terms or has gone to uh, online has probably gone from unorganized sector. The kind of discounts, the kind of fashion that they brought on TV and told people this is what you can wear, this is what you can buy. Mall owners could never have done that on TV or on on, on front page I ads of a crore ka ad le liya front page ka aur das din tak chala rahe hain aur usko Mall owners it. couldn't have done that. I love it. So can we do one thing? Can all of us brick and mortar retailer and brands clap for the e-commerce? Please record it and send it to all the e-commerce. We should say thank you in a big way. Yeah. Of course, why not? They, they taught people how, about brands and those brands are now going to open in the mall and buy. What's the problem there? Wonderful. Anyone of you? I think the whole panel so is… I have two, three points. Uh, first, I'll second what Mr. Bansal said that, you know, uh, it's creating a lot of exposure for the consumers. You know, consumers who are sitting in tier two, tier three markets, and it's brands like us who are realizing it, you know, 
that high fashion products are selling in these kind of markets. For me, a person who's coming from an Indian brand, you know, a lot of sales for us comes from places like Yamuna Nagar, Pathan Court, which we never imagined. So I feel that, and you know, it also comes from the fact that, you know, when we guys started, at least people like us from middle class families started shopping, we went to outlet stores first and we bought stuff on discount. And then we started liking branded stuff and then we could not get off it. So second, the fact that, you know, uh, the e-commerce has done good for all of us. Uh, would want to carry forward one more point that was discussed but uh, not in detail was the uh, malls and omni-channel and e-commerce collaborating to put together more shopping festivals. I feel, uh, you know, first the omni-channel presence has to increase so that, you know, uh, festivals of any scale can be done. But it does not stop us retailers as well as malls as well as developers to you know start focusing on these festivals start creating more opportunities more shopping opportunities wherein consumers can come who are now well aware about brand and quality so uh, i think this is a kind of an uh, appeal to all the developers and the third point that i wanted to put forward was about the indian brands getting lesser space or maybe you know get paying higher rentals and higher mgs and it has happened to us n number of times uh, there have been malls which have been kind like in orbit you know who have given us space on the ground what you have, they have, you have been done something before coming here huh? huh these are all sponsored panels huh? <laughs> i think there's so, somebody uh, nagesh who wants to add a point from the audience where is it there the gentleman at the back oh please 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 i can't even see hi i am varun uh, just going through the, all the discussion and what was happening on discounts and uh, shopping festivals, we are talking about collaborations. Just on a lighter note, a question to all the developers here. We put discounts and we, we talk about shopping festivals. Have, have ever the, the mall owners or the developers have put it in this way that let's have a shopping center, let's have a, uh, a festival where you buy for 100, we pay 40 and you pay 60. It's like a discount, right? So we've seen... Uh, it's the like a marketing strategy. So you have a shopping festival where customer pays 60% and the mall owners pay 40%. So that can only typically happen uh, when there's some third party money funding the it. moment revenue no, no. share touches 50%, we can do that. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, can, they can leave their part of the rev share or whatever. I mean, they've been earning from those consumers. They've, they've been earning from the... Uh, retailers. So can't they leave that part of for three days or five days of, of the whole year? So I think uh, the partnership in that way, uh, uh, Abhishek, correct me if I'm wrong, is already happening wherein the mall owner is and the, uh, the mall owner and really the brand actually today is contributing a lot more in the kind uh, is by giving gift vouchers which the mall owner is further giving it to i remember many years back when this concept of gift vouchers came up and the mall owner was getting these gift vouchers as marketing and promotion uh, in part of the lease document and saying give me 20000 rupees of vouchers and it was eventually going to the owner's family to go and shop uh, i think there is now really effectively the maturity has come in that these mall vouchers are actually being used the, during these shopping festivals wherein it is actually being given to customers, patrons to come in and encourage and reward them for shopping. And we've seen that I think most of the big malls are doing it and all the big brands today is becoming a very important part of a commercial negotiation of a deal today. That how much are you going to support the mall activity? And the mall owner has to put in those festivals and we see a lot of sometimes they're giving fancy cars as well. So I think that's coming. It's not that it's, it's coming, it's there. Both are contributing effectively to promoting the shopping center. He is given yeah. yeah, the whole idea is like, uh, it looks very fascinating for a, as, a, as a customer that a mall owner is giving, not giving a discount, he's paying on my behalf, right? So he's comparing with the e-commerce industry. So what he's saying is, the online players give 50% from their side, the valuation goes 500 times. So if you are start giving 50%, the chances are your valuation will go 500 times. You know, this yeah. is, but probably, this is but that he, story. Yeah, but uh, the, you need to understand the e-commerce company was also not paying the money. It was actually the financial investor who was really burning no, the money. No, 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 no. I, I call this the Dear Americans Pensioners Benevolence Fund to the yes, Dear the American Indians. Pension was paying. So I think we should be thanking the Americans and the other investors there. We have just a few minutes left. So, this. Nagesh sir, I want to take one point which is uh, which we were discussing over lunch and uh, since we are talking about a partnership of the mall 
owners or mall developers and uh, the shop, shopping center run uh, the people who run the shopping center and you're talking about brands we all talked about how we are going to do revenue maximization making better productivity and doing the so we're talking about really customers and also the profitability of the two interested parties what about somebody else who is involved in this business and we touch their lives every day uh, abhishek just one pinpoint question how many people in your mall are would be the employees who would be working including your employees and brand brand staff what 2 3000 people at least 3000 yeah 3000 3000 people working in that mall nagesh sir we were talking about this at lunch how are we improving their lives who are working 3000 people who are working in those malls are we creating something better for them because the world is talking about csr world is talking about diversity world is talking about improving employees i uh, think because these are the 3000 people who are actually servicing a customer it's not the brand owner who's sitting in the office corporate offices or the merchandisers is actually these 3000 people both from the mall owner and from the brand who's actually selling to the customer that guy how are we making his life better well i can uh, talk about one small initiative that we are taking and this we are taking for the class 4 staff because uh, training etc of the uh, I, uh, what i've seen is in store training and all those all of those things retailers are also doing but nobody talks about the class 4 staff and which which are quite large in number if you count the guards and the housekeeping staff that we have so we are creating a small patshala in our mall where the children of those staff will study during weekdays will probably get it registered by the government board and the uh, children will study in the mall through the weekdays and uh, we will try to at least get them at, up till class 10th or 12th or whatever best we can do so things like these will add up to larger causes i guess i can tell you uh, uh, about we work with all spectrum of brands we work from right from uh, fashion brands in the premium to mass segment to luxury brands and i can tell you the luxury brands when they come and negotiate they look at every small detail they will ask questions about where is the staff going to eat is there a staff canteen in the mall they will ask is there a changing room because they want to give their customer the best experience because please remember a lot of the staff is typically living in very over the outskirts of the city they're going to travel by public transport by 1 1 and a half hours they're not coming in air conditioned car so by the time they reach the mall you don't expect to be in perfect shape they want to come in they will need a shower they need to refresh themselves there has to be a staff canteen whereas most of the luxury brands i can tell you look into these details when they are actually evaluating a shopping center and i can think that industry needs to progress to that level where indian brands and international brands who are operating in india needs to make these efforts to ensure that their staff of both the mall as well as the uh, the brands as well need to take care that these people who are selling for you are in the best shape because they are attending to the customers as well and i know nagesh you're doing a lot of work on the train side and i uh, wanted to understand your experience on that perspective and then probably we'll speak to some brand owners as well what they are doing no i think we have we have enough publications that we have released uh, uh, we have got documental evidence to say that uh, <clears throat> an employee who has worked for 3 months versus 6 months versus 1 year uh, the productivity level goes up by almost 65% and we have evidence to say that uh, the employee says hum padhe likhe nahi hai tabhi to dukan mein kaam kar rahe hain koi padhata nahi hai to aage kaise badhenge yeah and and that's the reason that fusion happens and on the other hand when you go to retailers or brand owners i mean they say the guys are leaving in 3 months time so why should we invest in them i think this is a huge huge challenge that we will have and uh, i don't think we have much of option of not being able to take care of this front end because without that happiness you'll not be able to deliver uh, the kind of through put that actually you want to have uh, for example taking part timers taking weekenders i think this can make major make a huge difference in terms of uh, the retail productivity and i think there is evidence on paper that we have to say that it can make a difference to the business any this brand wants to, wants to say something and i think maybe that's the last one pankaj yes. so we can close hello yes uh, hi uh, my name is konal and i am from uh, being human so as you rightly said that uh, the things what we do for the staff and everybody is leaving after 3 months and 4 months so what we have done is that in every store of mine we have a, a specially abled staff uh, in every store and we train them through uh, through train and we work very closely with your team and uh, we have seen that uh, this staff is so productive because of all the things uh, we have taught them to do and uh, 
uh, all the consumers they love to you know uh, buy from them and you know encourage them and now we are going to move forward from keeping one staff in every store to maybe two in every store uh, this and we see that they don't even move around in different stores and change every three months so this has really helped uh, the way we are uh, shaping our store now I just want to add this and I, I don't know if there's anybody from DMART here but I must share this example with you that one and a half years back when we as uh, train went to DMART and proposed to them that please take people with uh, <coughs> disabilities and maybe they'll make a big difference because we have a business case that they are more productive, their retention is higher and uh, they create tremendous empathy within the organization and customers love to come and shop there. I mean with lots of thinking that it took just about five people in the first month and they saw the business case and that's what I think DMART is so smart about. They saw the business case, uh, now they're taking 50 employees per month. Okay, and not only that, they have an HR person who's only looking after the disability employees within the company. So I think there's a huge case that is available, being human is one company. I think as an industry, we'll also start projecting to the consumers as to how inclusive we are. And consumers love it, I must tell you, consumers love it. If there's somebody from Landmark Lifestyle, I mean, they have a program called Swabiman. Uh, you have the best employee of the month, for months have been people who are coming from a punk project, which is the project which we do for uh, persons with disability. Uh, I must tell you, last year we are graduated 2,300 uh, disabled youth. They're all working in retail. 40% of them are deaf and doing front-end work. Okay. <clears throat> we, we, intend, we intend taking this to about 10,000 over the next three years' time. We have 27 centers across the country. You will see about 100 centers where we will have disabled youth trained specifically for retail companies. And this is a huge opportunity that we have as retailers to do something for the society. Thank you very much for giving this opportunity to me. Thank you. Sanjeev, you wanted to add last one comment before you wrap Well, up? yes. Uh, actually, just adding to what Sir said, uh, there's this restaurant in Pawai called Mirchi and Mime. And uh, trust me, uh, I actually never knew about this place. So my wife said, let's go there. It's a very nice place. It's a special place. And, uh, and when I landed up there, I saw that uh, the entire front end staff is deaf and dumb. Yes, yeah, deaf. Are deaf, yeah. And not only that, uh, they actually, so I went the first time and after that I went like five more times. The food is fabulous. And what I have learned is the sign language. So now, not only that, uh, you know, I talk to them the way they want to talk to me. I have learned the sign language so I can actually Talk to, talk to them in full sentences using the sign language. It's so great to see that. I mean, it's, a, it's an amazing initiative. So whoever's not gone, I would request, please go to this restaurant. It's an, it's an amazing experience. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you very much. Yeah, we'll wrap up. Thanks for the panelists and the jury and above all the audience and the presenters uh, for being such a great uh, and being attentive and uh, giving us such valued contributions to the session. Nagesh sir, up to you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very Thank much. You. Let's put hands. Let's put our hands together for everyone.